Well, hi all, and welcome to an another episode of Jules Repairs. Well, when I say repairs, this is actually more of an improvement than a repair job this time, because if you remember the Jules tribute episode, uh, I had uh, used to have a uh, E-Flex fuel bioethanol adapter for a car and that it was broken. But since my previous car ran pretty well on bioethanol without the device, I didn't bother my mind with it that much. As it happens though, this new car of mine doesn't work with bioethanol without the adapter at all. So I uh, send it back to the manufacturer for mending and I kept my fingers crossed for a very cheap bill. There was something so profoundly broken in it and they sent me an email and asked if it was okay for them to send me a new, completely new unit to replace the old one. And I of course replied that I haven't got enough money on me to pay for a completely new device. Then they replied to me that there's no charge, silly pants, it's for free. Okay, perhaps they didn't use words such as silly pants, but anyway. As the warranty of the device had run out a couple of months before the breakdown, it's safe to say that I was very, very astonished by this act of decency and goodwill amongst the men. So I thought uh, the least I can do is show to you all that even I, with my very, very limited intellect and my fists of ham and fingers of butter, can, in fact, install this device into this engine just within a few minutes. There are already in YouTube very clear and thorough installation videos of this device. Still, they lack my commentary and mischief and nonsense and tomfoolery. So let's begin. We need access to these leads here and we cannot access them to them right now. So let's clear the area a bit first. I mean, I still get a little misty-eyed just thinking about what they did. They just basically give, gave me a second chance. Trying to have a little bit more economical driving here. Oh yes, there we go. Next thing we are, what we need to do is measure the polarity of these connectors here. And then we need to connect these leads here accordingly. These are connector types of EV1 and these are the most common connector types there are. To remove or install them, you need to push this little metal bit down here and then you can remove or install it. So, we take this voodoo magic electromagnetic bubble device here and we set it to resistance setting there. And uh, the instruction manual actually tells you to use the machine that goes ping. But I say why, because you, all you need to do is check which one of these leads are connected to the next one. Uh, nope. Yes. It's those ones which are on the car side there. You need to check all of them. It's all done properly. So now we know which ones are connected to the other, which means that there's current coming in. And then we need to check if this lead is the right way and the red wire goes into that port. That's easy. And what do you know? It's already the right way in. So all we need to do now is install them. But first you might want to take a few steps back and take a good clear look at the engine bay here. Clean a little bit if necessary. I'm not going to bother with that. 
obviously, but take a good hard look. It doesn't matter if you put it this way or that way, but what matters is that how you're gonna fiddle it all in. This is the older model. This is a lot larger and this is made actually from aluminum. So it's rather large box. You might want to think on this state where you want to place it here in the engine bay and where you want to take these leads because uh, these should be clear from any high voltage like these spark plugs here and these other ignition parts and then again you want to avoid anything which is hot which is exhaust and everything that is moving which is this radiator fan there and this fan belt obviously so but I'll think I'll do I'll put it down there that way and I make it go round on the either side because there's a clear space there which is covered so it's perhaps I'll put the unit in there yes plenty of space there's also pretty nice grounding place there so now that we have that thought of it's time to lay this device in a sort of manner that you can start installing it and it goes like this and make sure you keep these in order which are in the engine because they need to go the same place in which you remove them and then these you have to push this metal bit down to open the mouth there and then you can install or remove them if you don't push this down and you try to remove or install them you will break something in here because this is plastic and obviously not very strong but since there is very limited space here i'm gonna need a screwdriver with this you can push the metal clip down and install no it wasn't and install no it wasn't mm, come on ah there we go first one in i would normally start by fitting in the ethanol sensor here into the fuel line which goes there but since i want to make sure that that device actually works i'm gonna do it later so let's continue by installing these and then we can test whether this new device works or not. Oop! That sounded like something broke. Come on, get in. Sorry if you can see my builders crack, but yeah, come on, fit in, fit in. <sighs> two in, two to go. Let's try not to break more stuff. Ah, crap. There, that was. I was wondering where this part was from. Now it's covered in shit. This is everything always when you work with engines. If you are not building a new one. Everything is filthy and dirty. It sucks. And as it happens, I didn't think this true enough. Because if you see, I'm going to take this wire and lead it here which leads it right over these highly electrified lines and right over the exhaust manifold which is very very hot so and there have been casualties it's every single time I take something a little bit sharper than a pencil into my hands blood is about to spill <sighs> but anyway I think I'll lead them here, perhaps, that is actually, there's a room for it, in there, it leads them to here, hmm, that would actually be very, very wise indeed, you can lift them up here, and through here, and into here, ha, huh. not bad at all. Now then, we just pump this in here, it goes only one way in. Then we find grounding place for this, which is here. You might want to actually 
if there is a grounding place that you have had in mind, you might want to clear the paint a bit from the chassis of the car. It's a connection point to get clear connection. Now I've got it in place, installed. It's time to check out if it works. I just put this antenna here, so I can take a contact with this machine via mobile phone. The sensor is not yet installed, but it should run on sort of a fail-safe state. Now the application is up and running, and my phone is connected to the Bluetooth system of this device, but this application just won't find the device. Not connect the to eFlex fuel. Fuck off then. But anyway, we can get it connected, but we can try to start it. It works brilliantly. I mean, the warning light is showing that it is not connected to the the what do you call it? Sensor or the ethanol there, but it's running anyway. It's a shame I cannot connect to the phone though, but it seems to work. So we may continue and start the installation of the ethanol sensor there on the fuel line. Make sure that when you cut the fuel lines that you have a towel and a little cup ready for obvious reasons, because the petrol in there is pressurized, there will be spillage. It's actually the first time that I've done this like this, because I just normally cut the line from there with a knife, and I just installed a watchimer jigger in there, and there comes the gasoline. There wasn't that much pressure, just a little bit. But let's just collect that and make sure we recycle it properly. I'm not sure how to proceed. Should I just cut this? I am a little bit confused. After a long and considerate thought, we come to the conclusion that the fuel line has to be cut carefully with the knife because it's bloody sharp. God damn it. And it's no, it will slide off. Well, this is not perilous at all. With a bloody sharp knife on my hands. We are very much on the roll here. So we take the clamps here all the way. In. Nice, jolly nice. It goes like that. And that already is where I want it to be. Perfect, look at it. It's like factory fitting. Absolutely magnificent to behold. We need only one clamp on that side and one clamp on the other side and it will be just glorious. But now we need just to install the other end to the other side and then plug it in. God damn it. Deeper. Yes. No. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> sounds like I'm shooting an adult film here, but direction of the fuel flow is irrelevant, so it works either way. That'll do. That's my motto. But for now, let's put this. This is a engine block temperature gauge, and we, it needs to go less than a centimeter away from the engine block. I think that is a brilliant place for it. It stays there. I want to make sure that these are absolutely as tidy as I dare to screw them, because if they come loose, you will have petrol all over your engine bay. And that is, first of all, it's very hazardous for the environment. And second of all, it's bloody flammable, especially in the hot engine bay. But anyway, let's continue. We pop this 
in this. It goes only one way. It, let's pull that through there. So it stays off the harm's way. And let it pop it in to the device. Now what we should see when we put the ignition on, that their red light will turn blue, indicating that everything is a okay. It is blue as a something that's blue. Damn, I feel rather good about myself. Now we put this back on. We secure all the lines to go under there. I'm gonna take a little bit off from this plastic thing and put them through there so they'll say, stay safe and sound. Then we dry it on. This one goes into this railment here, like so. That one goes there and then just tighten it up. Um, Um, ah, there it is. Everything that isn't stolen will be found eventually. As my old teacher said centuries ago. Literally, actually, because it was uh, 1999. But you know, I found this. This is, uh, of course, a piece of some old scrap metal, and I'm gonna use it as a platform in here, in which, where I can secure the device more firmly down the, into the car so it won't move about and get broken or anything like that if I'm able that is because there's very little room in here to do anything come on get in get in Jesus how hard can it be thank you like so. Yes, I think it goes up there. It is like factory fitting. Most of my time seems to be going into finding things and stuff from my shed. Bloody butterfingers. No, it's the wrong way. Bloody fucking hell. It's good enough. And we are ready to try. It works brilliantly. Now we just have to keep an eye out for fuel leaks, which there is. We need to secure the fuel lines more properly, it seems. They are leaking both of them. I hope I didn't break anything. There we go. Yes, much better. The engine is running, no fuel is spilling out, and the device is working. Good night's work. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.